Hi guys. So as you know, the grub screws are missing from my CB antenna, which isn't particularly good. Strangely enough, if I was to key up this radio now on channel 20, we're parked up stationary, not moving, but well, the wind's blowing the antenna about. You can see that. The SWR is actually quite low. Now, I was worried it was actually quite high, because the last time I checked it was reading uh, relatively high. But I've checked that. On that SWR meter, it's reading lower than I'm expecting it to. So I'm going to check that with the with the VNA, um, assuming the VNA's got any charge in it. It does. So I'm going to check that with the VNA, which I've not changed the calibration on, and see if it tallies up. I'm not actually sure how well you can see the screen on this, so I'm going to try and shade it a little. Uh, um, the, the entire Citizens Band, this is set to read from 26.9 to 28 megs. 28 megs is the start of the amateur 10 meter band. Not sure how well you can see this, but if you look there, that's the line for the SWR, that's the trace. And up here should be the SWR readings. And as you can see, wherever I put this frequency, it's flat. It is flat. Oh, don't want to do that. So, that surprised me, even though the grub screws are missing. But the issue with the grub screws being missing is it'll rattle the whip about and could potentially cause the SWR to shoot up. And the newly acquired Midland 3001, which will be arriving with me uh, this week. There'll be a video on that. Well, I don't want to blow up the, the, the output transistor on that because it might well be unobtainium. And, you know... <laughs> Whereas I have no qualms of blowing up the output transistor on a Thunderpole T3000 because I'm pretty sure I can replace that. So that came as a bit of a surprise. I... So yeah, as you can see, that's the trace. That's with the CB antenna connected. I'm actually quite surprised by that. It was high when I last checked it. It was like 7 to 1 when I last checked it. But I did unscrew that antenna earlier and I did put it back and I did mess around with the whip. So... Grub screws all I need, and uh, a viewer did suggest, I did mention this in a post actually, that uh, Timu actually sell these grub screws. I've looked on there, and they certainly do, um, in like different sizes, in boxes. So I think that's worth a purchase. Anyway, I only came down here to actually check the SWR on the 4 meter antenna and see if I could get it working, so I've not really got much better to do today for reasons I shan't explain. And could I get it to tune? No, it just simply will not tune no matter whereabouts on the car it is. And unless it's the roof bars interfering with it, which is an entire possibility, or the other antennas, then I, which is also an entire possibility, but I did take the CB antenna off because that's the closest antenna to it. And that's made no blind bit of difference. Which is why I'm a, I think the CB antenna's kind of sorted itself out. Which actually does amaze me. So, so I think all I need to do is put the grub screws back in when I get some grub screws. Well, that won't be today and it certainly won't be tomorrow. And it will take probably a while for grub screws to actually arrive if I buy those from Timu. Because... It's going to be a damn sight cheaper than me replacing that antenna. And that antenna works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I could swap it out temporarily for a different CB antenna, but all the other ones I've got are either short or a bit too rigid, we shall say. And I tend to drive under a lot of tree branches and don't want rigid CB antennas. And the shorter ones are not really what I would call ideal because that reduces the range. So that Serio High Power 4000 that's on the roof of the car right now is perfectly adequate for, for my needs. Anyway, I'm going to end it here. 
and that's the VNA's battery just died. So I'm gonna have to put that on charge when I get back in up in the house. And I'm debating on I'll leave the four meter rig in the in the car and just have a listen for the minute. I'm not really keen on running it with a mismatched SWR because obviously I don't know how much the output transistor for a Motorola GM350 costs, if you can even get them. And also, we have, when I've looked inside there, it looks like it's a right pain in the backside to change. Because you need to use all thermal paste and everything, because it's all like thermally mated to the chassis and all sorts. It's... Because it's a 25 watt radio, and although it's not designed really for the sort of duty cycle hams give it, it works fine. And this one's a little bit better because I actually dropped this squelch down to uh, something a little bit more suitable. Right, I'll catch you in the next one.